Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday, you made it through another week. And we have a big show planned for you today. Uh, normally we'd be doing a uh, show and tell Friday, but uh, because we have a couple projects, it's going to be Fabrication Friday. We have, uh, like I said, a couple projects to knock out for some fellow members at the Long Island Tool Meet that we're going to be meeting uh, the end of this month. So I want to get them done. Uh, so what do you say we get started right away? It's, it's quite a bit of work, and let's get to it. Okay, next up, my good buddy Mike from the Long Island Tool Club brought this tool down, and we were discussing this. And what this is, it's a hollow tenon brace cutter, and it goes into a regular brace, uh, you know, a hand drill. And what this does, you can see it's adjustable here, and what it will do is it'll put a reduction on the end of a uh, any kind of piece of wood, make it into a round kind of dowel at the end. So these were used, and this, you can see here, it has a couple adjustments. This here goes up and down to adjust how long you want that end of the dowel of the uh, rounded part of your wood to be. And you could see here, this is really interesting. If you look over here, you could see, here's the adjustments. Can you see that there? It says quarter inch, half inch, three quarter, one inch, and one and a quarter. Now that was stamped in there real nice. You can see that little line there, that corresponding line. The problem is that this is stripped. He can't tighten, and this has to be real tight or else when you're using this, it'll open up, you know? And you can see how it's adjusted when it open up. Interesting part, here's the part that's broken. First of all, you have the, uh, the thumb nut or whatever adjusting, but this is very intricate. It's got a little spur gear there that when and knurled, and when you turn this like this, it opens. You can see how this works. There's a corresponding rack there, so it's like a rack and pinion. When you turn this, you can adjust. Isn't that beautiful how that works? But the problem is it's stripped out here. You can see. Those are flattened out and also here. And this is kind of crude. I mean, it's beautifully, this is made beautifully, but look at this thumb nut. First of all, they left a flashing on the outside. That's kind of crude. And whoever tapped it or drilled it, you know, it wasn't centered. So what we have to do is fix this, that it clamps down. Now, obviously making this part is out of the question <laughs> with my skill set anyway. It's a little bit hard to make this. So, what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can't fix these threads and make some kind of thumb nut to put this back in service. Okay, the first thing we want to do is determine the screw pitch and thread of this. And this is a very, a lot of times with these tools, they had their own threads. They did that years ago before they standardized threads. They used to make whatever they felt like. And this one here is 5 16 thickness. And by going by using my thread gauge here, you could see this is... 32 don't fit and how you do it you get a white background and here we have 30 you can see here this is 30 threads per inch and you put it on the edge here like this and you see if it matches and this one here does match so this is 30 even though the threads are galled up i can get it to match on the top here the uh, top half this is 30 threads per inch by 5 16 state we don't even have a die or a tap or uh, you know so what could you do so now this is messed up. So you have to go to a size lower because you're going to have to shave this down and then re-thread it and then make a new nut. Now, this isn't a high stress air. You don't have a lot of pressure on here. You're just trying to hold it tight so it don't slip. So we're okay if we go down a little bit. And uh, so what we're going to have to do is we'll have to put this in a lathe, take it down, re-thread this to something that we have and then put another thumb, make another thumb screw and that'll save this tool. Now, if you were doing a heirloom restoration, or this was a rare tool, these aren't rare, and they're hardly used anymore. They do make new modern ones for, you know, that have a regular uh, round shank for using in modern machinery, but this here is kind of uh, antiquated, but we still want to save it, you know? So how can we do that and not go, you know, $50 worth of special tools to get this made. So that's what we're going to do. Reduce that and make a thumb screw. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take it down to the next popular size that we have here. Now 
This here, uh, as you know, is a, a caliper here, and we're going to measure, this is 250,000, so a quarter inch, okay? This bit is quarter inch, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take our little uh, spring calipers, put them on here so it just passes over. You see that? It just touches on both sides, okay? Now... We can turn that shaft down to this size, okay? Once we have it turned down to this size, we will thread it. Now, this is a die, a typical die. I have one in the die holder already. And when you put it into the die holder, this is a hex die holder, so it'll hold it on there tight. But remember, on the dies, there are two sides. Always one will say, start this side. So in other words, this is where you have to start it from. And that's because it's kind of tapered a little bit or else you won't be able to start it. If you tried to start on this side, it'd be very difficult. So this allows you, and it's also good to put a little chamfer on the end there, I'll show you, and then we'll, we'll tap this on. This is quarter by 28. It's a fine thread for quarter inch, and uh, let's get over to the lathe. Now, the first thing we want to do is put it in the lathe and make sure it's running true. Once we figure out it's running true, then we'll just take it down to quarter inch and you can see we'll use the spring calipers to make sure that we have it down there you can see how they pass over just like they did with that quarter inch drill bit now we're ready to uh to chamfer the tip you see what we're doing there we're just taking that tip down there so that it enters the die a little bit more easy and then we'll file it down we'll get it nice and ready and now, here's the thing. When you're using the die holder, especially on the lathe, it's always, obviously, we're using tap magic lubricant. You have to use that tapping fluid. And uh, you see we're using the uh, drill chuck here in the tailstock just to hold it flat and level against the, the shaft. You see that? And I'm, I'm giving it a quarter turn. I'm advancing the... Uh, the tail stock a little bit so it keeps pressure against that so that's how you get that die handle to go on straight if you try and do this in a vise or holding it with your hand it's always hard and it's it's very difficult to do this makes it so much easier and you can see we get a nice result over here we're working on the knob and when working on the knob here obviously i'm cutting the one section first that's going to make contact with the base and here I flipped it around and I'm just smoothing that out. Now I'm going to drill it and tap it. And I'm working my way up with the drill bits until I get the right size, the tapping drill for a quarter by 28, which I believe is a number three. Here I'm making the knob and I'm doing this by hand with a hacksaw. And that's steel. That's a piece of steel I have in there. And you can see I'm just cutting it on one side and the top. And you see when those cuts meet, I just put it back in the vise and uh and just file and then uh you see here i just work it with the file back and forth and then it comes out pretty nice i'm pretty happy with the way that looks and it's a solid knob okay so we're calling this project done you can see here what we did here that's a quarter by 28 thread very strong thread and you can see how it engages into here into the nut we have it all the way up you know into the top here and uh, I blued it just so it wouldn't look out of place. Let's put this on. Okay, so there we go. We have a very functional fix here. And you can see what you do is tighten this down, tighten this down. Because this has to be very solid so it won't spread open. But um, you can see here when we loosen this up, you can see how uh, this will turn one way or the other. To, and then you set the size that you want. You lock this down. And when I say lock it down, this will really engage now. You cannot move that. And it doesn't really stand out as far as you wouldn't notice it was not part of it if you looked at it right away. But there we go. Mike, I think you'll enjoy it. It's a good fix. I think it's, I truly think it's stronger than before because this is machined instead of cast like that other nut. So there we go. This one's in the can. Okay, so I'm upstairs. I'm watching TV and I'm thinking about the job we did. And I said, you know, suppose Mike wanted to save this. And, and keep it original. I suppose we had something where we had to save this part. Could we? And I said, you know, I think maybe we could. Let me show you what I had in mind. Now, because this is a, an uneven piece, we have to put it between uh, sacrificial blocks of wood in the vise here. And then we took a center finder here and we're, we're getting this exactly so that this is exactly perpendicular 
to the surface here, okay? And when we have it like that, that it's not touching the side, we can switch this out for the we drill We swapped bit. it out for the drill bit and we'll just drill that out. That's the exact bit needed to uh, thread it up the next size. Okay, here we go. Now, what I did is I drilled this out to 3 8 by 16. Okay, that's the next size up. I put in an, a threaded in, a threaded rod. I cut it in, then cut the threaded rod off. Then I pinned it. You see that pin there? You could just make out the pin, the shaft there. Pinned it all the way through. Then I remember it was off center. I centered it and drilled it out and tapped it quarter by 28. So, and then I just filled in a little JB well because you know I had some imperfections here. I'm going to paint this now, but this is, uh, this, I think this repair is actually stronger than before because this is a steel insert where the other is cast and cast is never strong as steel. So that, what do you think of that fix? Okay. So here we go. Here's the finished project. You could see here how that looks. Looks pretty nice, right? We'll screw this on here. And, uh, now you could see how that works again. Uh, now, it's funny because this dark black kind of stands out since the rest of it's worn, but this will wear in because it is a thumb screw. But there we go. What do you think? Which one? The, obviously, this one here is original, so I guess this is the one Mike will go with, you know. But there we go. That was a good fix. Very interesting projects today. Okay, next up, I don't know if I have time for this today, but a good friend of mine, Dan, you know, my mentor from uh, the Tool Club, Dan Samo, he uh, needed a piece to... Uh, for one of his projects he's doing, a piece of aluminum in these dimensions. You can see it's 33 millimeters across the top, 27.5 across the bottom, a little step here. Uh, the thickness is 275 each step, millimeters 2.75, and 550 is the entire dimension. And chamfers on that corner and that corner. Now, I have this piece of aluminum. It's, it's drilled out in the middle here. And I don't know how far it's drilled out, but it looks like it's drilled out pretty close. So we might be able to get away with using this piece of aluminum. I'm going to clean up this side. And the big part, the challenge with this is holding the piece in the chuck because these are very small dimensions. Right down here, that's 2.75 millimeters. So if I was to turn this down into a step, it wouldn't, the chuck wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be able to grip it. It's just not enough room on there. So... Sometimes you have to make it a little long. I'll show you how we're going to do this. You got to think ahead on projects like now, this. Now, what we did is we took this this whole entire piece down to 33 millimeters. You could see here, that's 33. I don't know if you could see it here, but that's exactly 33 millimeters. Obviously, we use the, uh, the calibers here. But um, now what we're going to do is now we're going to mount, and we put the chamfer on this side. Now, we're going to mount this into the chuck, and then we're going to take off this area. First, we're going to cut it and then we're going to take it and then take that step. The reason that we're doing it this way is because remember that hole that's drilled in the center of this? I don't know how far that hole goes up. Normally, we would just leave it in the chuck and make the step. So this, this is why we have to do it this way. And we're calling this project done. You can see here, this is the part. Okay, this is the part. It is 33 mil. I'm within about two or three thousandths on on all the measurements and, and you know it's hard to to keep those tolerances to get that close two or three thousandths or whatever i don't know it looks like some kind of lid or something i don't even know what the part is for but chamfered the edges like he asked top and bottom and uh there we go so we'll see if it fits if not we can make another one but i've learned a lot you know you have to practice when it comes to working with anything perfect practice makes perfect so if you screw up with this, it's only a learning experience. Then you can make another one and you'll know more. Okay, so in closing, there you go. We have a couple projects we knocked out and I think they came out pretty good. And uh, one thing I have to tell you that, you know, we're working on the lathe or a lot of tools that you have around the shop, even the table saw or, or other mechanical tools that you have, uh, you know, you have to stay current. If you don't use it, you lose it. You have to, every once in a while, you have to get on it and work it because if you if you get stale after not using it for a few months, you could see it takes some time and, you know, uh, to get your mindset back in the way these uh, tools operate. So it's really important to stay current with your, your uh, motorized tools around the shop. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We'll see you again on Monday. Have a great weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.